<laughs> okay, so let's start with single bar, high bar releases. We'll deal with the counter flight or reverse hecht. It can come from an entry from a backward swing or a backward circle. The giant swing entry is a D. The clear hip circle entry, the Hindorf, is an E. Soul circle or toe on entry is an E. Stalder circle entry is an E. And the clear pike or in bar circle is not listed in the JO code, but if it were, it would be an E. So the only only one that is a D is the, from the giant swing entry. We're on the technique of this element, we're expecting the re release near the top of the upswing. The chin will be tucked in, maximum pressure against the bar. Following the release, rotation forward and flight backward over the high bar to a regress with the hips above the high bar. So we're going to deal with the, the Tkachev from the giant swing entry, the D element. So it's number 4405 in your code, and there is the, uh, uh, you know, the symbol, in case you're wondering how to write the Tkachev. Oh, gosh. Oh, here we go. And let's take a look at Tkachev technique. Tap on downswing. Kick into a pike over low bar. Drive opening through shoulders and chest. Release and rotate forward with backward flight over high bar. Catch while continuing to fully open stretched position. Now well, that was pretty. So let's talk about the single bar deductions. It's up to two tenths for height or amplitude. That's the height in the, of the flight over the high bar. We're also looking for up to one tenth for under rotation. There needs to be a balance between height and rotation. And the backward travel has no specific deduction, but obviously you need that if you're going to get to the other side of the bar. Let's look at our guidelines for height. There's no deduction. If the hips are above the high bar height, at just prior to regrasp. If the hips are at high bar height, that's this blue line here, it's a flat 05 deduction. And if their hips are below high bar height, just prior to regrasp, it's a 1 to 2 tenth deduction. Guidelines for under rotation. If you can see this little red girl in here, her legs are fully compressed by her shoulders as she's reaching for her regrasp, as opposed to this blue girl who is fully extended as she reaches for her regrasp. So there's your extreme. The red girl gets a one-tenth deduction. The blue girl doesn't get any deduction for under rotation. Now let's look at the J-O definition of under rotation. Hips slash legs, legs need to rotate backward to full extension after the regrasp. Now here, obviously, this gal is regrasping with her legs behind her shoulders, and she has not begun to open at all. And this girl is fully extended above the bar as she regrasps the bar. Now, I have a little bit of an issue with the fact that J.O. says after regrasp, but it doesn't say how long after regrasp. Now, for instance, this girl here, she would actually get fully extended by the time she gets to the bottom of the swing, but there would be no backward angle. And so um, I kind of like to add in this FIG um, definition of feet behind the shoulders just prior to regrasp. So here we have someone who's reaching for her regrasp. Here's her shoulders and her feet are behind her. So she's obviously already begun her opening. She has plenty of room to finish that opening to full extension to get a full swing forward into her next element. 
So we kind of used the two of these to uh, determine what we're looking for on ro rotation. Then we are also looking for up to two tenths for body position or shape. And of course the up to three tenths each for bent arms and legs and then you oftentimes will find your up to one tenth for your flexed feet also. We are going to see three examples of each of the releases. We, the first one will always be the best one with the A ranking. The second one, we're going to call it better, it gets a B ranking. Our third example will be called a good example, it will only get a C ranking. And then we are going to see two viewings of each of the releases. First in slow motion, and then in slow motion with freeze frame and voiceover. And then we're going to get three test examples. And again, you'll get the two viewings of each release in slow motion. I will not stop action it with freeze frames. And then you will get um, the test examples in random order. And that's going to be your job is to put them in ABC order. So A being your best example, B being the better example, and C being the good example. So let's take a look at our best example with the A ranking. Release near top of upswing. Great height and rotation. Catch with hips above the bar and feet behind the shoulders, but with loose form and execution errors. And, uh-oh, why isn't it going? My button's not working. So here is our second example with the B ranking. Release near top of upswing. Failure to rise and poor rotation. Catch with hips near high bar level and feet even with shoulders, but with tight execution and clean form. And our last example with the C ranking. Insufficient upswing, release early. Failure to rise and no rotation. Catch with hips below high bar and feet in front of shoulders. Legs bent on tap swing, but otherwise clean form. Okay, ready. This is your first test example, so watch it twice and remember what it looks like. Second example. And your third example. Okay, so now it's time for the polling. You are to submit your rankings. I think it's going to be a multiple, yes, choice polling. So go ahead and put in the rank order you thought these should come in. Okay, are we ready? Ooh, we're changing and changing. Yep, we still have a couple people <laughs> entering in their vote. Up to 100, it's slowing down just a little bit.
Okay, ready to see the scores here? Yeah. Okay, so uh, they can all see this now, right? What the yes. rankings were? So here's yeah. what everyone put. Okay, so um, they chose BAC over CAB for the most part. And um, I am going to, can I move on to the next slide? With, yep. Okay. okay, now I did not go with the majority of, of you there. And the reason is, well, um, let's watch them again. And uh, I will give you my explanation during that. Release early on the upswing. Failure to rise and no rotation. Catch with hips below the high bar and feet compressed behind the shoulders with no opening. Body shape and execution errors. Release near top of upswing. Good height and rotation. Catch with hips above high bar and feet behind the shoulders. Execution generally clean and tight. Short upswing, early release. Some height and rotation. Catch with hips about even with high bar and feet even with the plane of the shoulders. Body shape errors and bent leg. Okay, and I think that bent leg just sticks out like a sore thumb and I, I assume that's really why a lot of you would have gone with that as the worst example. But I think for the balance of height and rotation, um, it was a better release than that first one. But I knew that would be a controversial issue. So if there aren't any, or if there are any questions, go ahead and put them in to Lindsay and uh, we can get at them as they come. But in the meantime, I'm going to move on to the second single bar release, the Jaeger. It's number 5405 in the code. It comes from a swing down forward between the bars in reverse or L grip. Swing backward with salto forward tucked or straddled. Uh, we don't see a tuck uh, Jaeger too often, but do remember that it is worth a D. But we are going to deal with the straddle, obviously, in this situation, which is the most common one. Nowadays, of course, you see more pike Jaegers than ever before since they're an E, but um, we're still going to uh, see the, the straddle Jaeger is what I've chosen. So here's the technique for straddle Jaeger. Reverse tap over low bar to a tight arch with heels driving upward, open shoulder angle. Release with feet above horizontal, curl body upward into forward rotation, catch with hips above high bar and hip extension backward. Very nice. So now let's look at our first test or our first example with the A ranking. Slight shoulder angle, but tight arch with heels driving above horizontal. Good height and rotation. Catch slightly above high bar with hip extension backwards. Slight arm bend. And a little lower back arch. And here is our, uh, our B ranking. Slight leg bend and weak drive of backswing. Adequate height and good rotation with backward extension. Catch with hips at high bar height. Put form errors. And our C ranking. Weak drive of backswing. Very poor height, minimizing angle of backward extension. Hips well below high bar and catch. Body position, clean and tight. Okay, ready for our test examples. Test example number one.
Test example number two. And test example number three. And ready to submit your polling for ranking the Jaegers. All right, you ready to see the poll? Okay, you bet. So where CBA was our, our top choice by far, and I do agree with you. CBA, and these are the reasons. Let me make this go away. Incomplete, low backswing, minimal height, hips below high bar on catch and poor angle of backward extension, body shape and execution errors. Backswing somewhat lacking, adequate height, hips at high bar level on catch, rotation to good backward extension angle, execution clean and tight. Back swing somewhat lacking, slowing initial leg rotation, excellent height, hips above high bar on catch with good rotation to backward extension. Okay, now she had really nice height. Her legs stopped rotating. However, she was, used her flexibility to really roll inside of there and reach between her legs and then continue that extension backwards while she was still at a very high angle. So that was a little unusual. However, um, you can't deny the amplitude of that release. And Judy, one, one question as far as all releases go, is there a deduction for early release or is it just for height and rotation? It's height and rotation, but I'm describing that that's what's causing. An early release causes the low height. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We are now ready to move into the high to low bar releases. I'm going to use the overshoot to handstand and I'm going to call it a bail. This is the most common uh, high to low bar release. And uh, it is a D when it comes from a handstand or a hang. As long as it lands in a handstand on low bar, the bail is a D. So let's take a look at bail technique. If entry from handstand, initiate with a planche or pike to decrease acceleration into the long swing forward. No tap swing or just a very small late tap. Achieve and maintain tight straight hollow body position, no shoulder angle. Absorb arrival on low bar without a body position collapse. And I'm not saying that was a perfect example. She did have a little shoulder angle. She was a little bit out of vertical, but she was nice and tight. And that's what I found for an example. So don't think it was a perfect example. And again, we're talking about two tenths for amplitude as we do in all of our releases. But let's establish what we actually are expecting. We want a sufficient rise to carry her to a straight body handstand upon arrival. Um, it is conceivable that she could get like a, a giant shoot up and rise and then a drop down, a vertical drop into the handstand. This is a possibility, but it's very rare and I don't expect it. Um, just having sufficient distance between the hands and the hips uh, is all I'm really expecting to make it into a straight handstand upon arrival. Shape and timing is important in this 
whole concept. Uh, if they do have a shoulder angle or a pike, um, that will be a bad body shape, but it will also affect the angle that they arrive in. If their body position is out of vertical by 10, uh, 10 to 20 degrees past the vertical, there is a flat O5 deduction, but it's still a D. If she does arrive beyond 20 degrees, of course, then it's a B or a C. It just devalues, um, instead of calling an amplitude deduction, we just call it a B or a C. So let's take a look at our first example of a very good bale. Initiate with a planche to slow forward swing. Scoop without a tap. Excellent shape and great amplitude. Nailed the arrival. And our B example. Flexed feet at bottom of swing. Insufficient amplitude. Hip rise and extended body position not completed until after arrival. Finish within 10 degrees. And our C example. Early and loose body twisting into turn. Insufficient amplitude in poor body shape on arrival. Bent arms, head out, not in vertical, but within 10 degrees. Okay, let's get into our bail test. Example number one. Example number two. And our third example. Okay, time to submit your ranking to our poll. All right, <clears throat> looks like responses are slowing down. So we'll go ahead and show you the results here. Okay, so we're looking at uh, B, C, A, definitely. Okay, oops. Okay, can I get this out of here? Darn. Why does it do that? Okay, so BCA is what I gave it as well, and here are my reasons. Good shape and amplitude, slightly loose body and shoulder angle on arrival, slightly out of vertical. Good amplitude, generally poor shape, loose body, leg separation. Good shape, great amplitude, tight body, straight handstand. Okay, very nice. Now, I just would like to say a few words about the B and C level bales. We won't have a test on them, but I would like to discuss them because they are probably your most prevalent high to low bar release. We even see these now at uh, level eight, 
So eight, nine, and 10, especially nines. Anything beyond 20 degrees from vertical will either be a C or a B. If it came from a handstand or if it's preceded by a D or an E release, it is a C. If it came from a hang, it is a B. So that's all there is to it. If it's a handstand, it's a D. If it's not, it just is dependent upon what it came from rather than the angle that it arrived once it's 20 degrees past vertical. The JO criteria for amplitude for no deduction is good flight. That is good distance between the hips and the low bar. Now when I was describing the, the good height on the bale to a handstand, she would need to get a, uh, her hips in a straight line above the bar and that would be good flight. Now this, this is also, this is fine for amplitude of flight. Remember now, if it does not get quite that high, it's been devalued to a B or a C already. So we're looking at different criteria for the amplitude. There is no deduction if she catches at horizontal or above. So a horizontal catch is acceptable for the amplitude of height. So uh, take it for what it is. Uh, this one, she actually caught while she was a little bit below. And I would have taken a little amplitude deduction. And that one is absolutely fine. The other criteria is that there is an extended position from the shoulders to the feet. Straight line here. Straight line. What we are not allowed to see is the pike in the arrival position. Now, of course, you can pike on the downswing to slow things down. But in the flight and the catch, now here you have to have a straight body position. So this now, I can't call it an amplitude deduction. I would rather call it a body shape deduction, but that's where we are in our, our JO code. Uh, gives us definition about having that straight line from shoulders to the feet. And this would be a deduction for the pike. And my point about these bales is B and C level bales should not be scary. There are plenty of drills and progressions out there that the coaches should be going through with these athletes before I see this element in competition. They need to learn to control their swing down with their planche or their pike. They need to establish good shaping and the strength to hold that shape. They need the timing of when to release and to be able to get their visual of the low bar before catching it. Too often I see the unacceptable as I call it, a death-defying, flailing, flying object that, that throws me right out of my judging seat. Um, I find that very frightening, and I just wanted to put my two cents in as far as I do not want to see those kind of bales until they are ready to be released in competition format. <laughs> okay, just a personal note there. And... Yeah. How about a question on bales before we head into packs? Oh, yes, yes, let's do that. Okay. Do you take anything when they hit in handstand on the low bar after the bale and there is a little twist of the shoulders or hips as they square up? Um, an adjustment, there is a possibility of having too much adjustment. Oftentimes you'll see rather a, uh, like a collapse in the back where they'll sag. Now that, that would be a body position error. They need to be like pushing out against it so that they don't collapse. But a, a slight adjustment as a bar recoils should not be a deduction. Uh, if it's an obvious adjustment on their part, you know, twisting around and stuff, you might get a half a tenth on that. But for the most part, you have to realize that the bar is going to give a little recoil and they need to be resisting that so they don't collapse. Sure, that makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do our, our next high to low bar release, and that is the pack salto. Probably our next most famous release from high to low. And it can start from a hang or from a handstand. 
Uh, swing forward, salto backwards, stretched between the bars to clear support with regular cross grip. So if the pack comes from a handstand, it also would use the uh, initiation with the planche or the pike to decrease acceleration into the long swing forward. That's just what we saw before on the uh, same as the bail. The difference here is that we do use a tap. Tap to hollow body position over low bar. Begin opening, release, head slightly out for visual of low bar. Rise, stop feet, open to tight arch, reach down for low bar. Grasp with stretched body line, minimum 45 degrees. Okay, very nice. Okay, our up to two in amplitude. I say that you should see a detectable rise in the flight. The feet stop and the whole thing rises somewhat. The catch must be to a definite clear support, not a hang. J.O. Code says that the hips have to be above um, the level of the low bar. If you noticed in the voiceover, I said 45 degrees. That's my opinion. If we went with hips above the level of the high or the low bar. I can't imagine that working out. If you were in a clear support position with your hips at about low bar level, you would definitely be into a back hip circle out of it. There's, there's no way. You can't. You've got to catch with a higher extended body position, both open shoulder angle and open hips. The shape is important. Uh, it's that tight arch. The things that you might find wrong, kind of based on the timing of it, you may get uh, an excessive arch or just loose body in general. And here's something that needs to be dealt with is the timing of the release. If they release too soon, uh, they travel forward. If their hips travel forward between the bars, they will have to reach down and break their shoulder angle to catch and possibly even bend their arms. Then they will be unable to control the kip and it may result in a backward hip circle. Also, over rotation may occur. And if, that, if they don't stall out and kind of rise and stop their feet up there, but instead they continue to rotate around, by the time they grasp, their feet may um, hit the floor or have the fall between the bars. And I'm sure you've seen this scenario plenty of times where they either hit the floor or they just flat out fall off between the bars. And here's a note, if they hit the floor hard between the bars, it's um, a fall and then they don't get the, the bonus for the D. If they actually catch the low bar and they catch on the, and they hit the floor on the other side, in the kip portion of it, they will get credit for the D and just take the fall or the hit and bent legs on the other side of the bar on the kip. So let's look at what happens when one of these packs travels too close to the low bar and over rotates. See, she's right over the top of that. What else is she going to do? So that's the scenario that I was describing. So with that in mind, let's look at our first example with the A ranking. Good tap, visible rise, great body position, good clear support angle. And the fact that she's able to work out of this with a stalter kind of gives you an indication that she has a good clear support. Let's look at our second example with a B ranking. Good tap. Visible rise, but too much rotation that continues through the regrasp. Arms bend in support and fail to control pushback into glide. 
and the C pack. Head is out too early on the tap. Extreme arch, loose body, legs apart, over rotation, no clear support, bent arms. And you see, I called that no clear support. Um, she's like below 45 degrees. Beyond there, I'm calling it a hang. She's, she doesn't have any control at that point. And we had a question about packs that look like that as well. So uh -huh. is there or what would be the deduction if they don't catch in that clear support? So the shoulders are way behind the bar, but she still kept her feet off the ground. Okay, so the amplitude is up to two and the body shape is up to two. So um, there is a likelihood that she rotated instead of rows. So you'll take your possibly one in amplitude, but the two-tenth in body shape is very likely. And if they do catch and they're still moving into it, like I said, they could end up with the bent arms and then you get your bent arm deduction as well. Sounds good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready for our pack test example number one. Example number two. And pack example number three. Okay, time for our ranking on the polls. Okay, looks, oops, almost, almost done. All right, here we go. Okay, show it. Very good, and I agree with you. A, C, B. Or, let me make this go away. Good tap, great height, good clear support angle, tight execution, and generally good shape. Poor tap, head out, bad shape. Poor height, legs apart. Over rotation, no support angle, extreme execution errors. I made that one too easy. Head out early on the tap, visible rise, good support angle, generally tight execution, but flexed feet. Okay, and so she just didn't have as much height as the first one, otherwise it was decent. So let's move on to our low to high bar releases, unless you have any other questions about the high to lows. No other questions on those. Okay, so we are going to deal with counterflight elements. Uh, counterflight from low to high can be, uh, can have an entry from a sole circle, a clear underswing, a stalter circle, or a clear pike or in bar circle. They are all valued at C. Here are examples of each of those sole circle entry. The clear underswing, and this is Mo, the gal that invented the skill. Stalder circle entry. And the clear pike or in bar circle entry. And we are going to deal with the sole circle 
entry, which is by far the most common toe shoot that we use. And by the way, I'm using the term toe shoot, and I know there are a lot of different um, names for that, uh, the fling or hiccup. Um, the fact that we don't have just a one or two word answer for it, under swing, pike, sole, circle, on low bar, all that, I can, we're going to just say toe shoot today. So let's look at good toe shoot te technique. Late toe on. Feet disengage, aiming above high bar, strong backward thrust of the arms. Hips rise near high bar level. Powerful turnover forward while rotating legs backward. Grasp high bar while legs continue backward to fully extended position with hips well behind high bar and feet near low bar. Okay, and the amplitude for up to two tenths, we're looking for height. And this is the definition in the code. The hips need to rise approaching the level of the high bar. And then the under rotation is, they describe it as after the grasp of the high bar, the hips and legs must continue to rotate backward to fully extended stretched position. And what's important here is that the center of gravity is well behind the high bar and the feet are toward the low bar. They might be under the low bar if she's a taller girl. Um, but the, the full stretched out position here, we need straight arms, straight shoulder angle, extended hip angle, and everything stretching back toward the low bar. This is the critical aspect of this skill. So they must shoot up between the bars, do the rotation between the bars, and get the extension backwards if they're able to get a, a decent swing out of it. They need to balance that height and rotation between the bar. If they don't go between the bars, that is aim their feet above the high bar, it will result in a flat trajectory. And then they'll be too close to the high bar. They'll catch with bent arms and a dead hang with no forward swing into the next skill. So here's an example of what happens when you travel too much on this. So she has bent arms, vertical hang. Oftentimes at the bottom of that dead hang, they won't be strong enough and they will stop and get an extra swing at that point. The long hang kip will be a struggle. Oftentimes you get three tenths bent arms on the long hang kip. And then the other problem is when they get to the top, oftentimes they're not able to continue with the cast out of it, and so they take the extra swing at the top. So all these things happen, and we've all seen them, when the toe shoot uh, travels too far forward and gets underneath the high bar, and they don't have good back extension. Okay, let's look at our first example of a good toe shoot. Strong opening aiming above high bar. Good hip rise and turnover. Shoulders even with high bar on regrasp. Good extension backward. And our B example. Opening is not aimed above high bar. Very little hip rise. Shoulders are at high bar level on regress, but too close, resulting in bent arms. Full extension is not achieved until too late. And our C example. Opening is aimed below high bar. Severe lack of hip rise. Shoulders below high bar with fully bent arms on catch. Though open, not in position to initiate forward swing until hips are under high bar with extreme arch. Okay, ready for your test examples? Judy, they yeah. really are beautiful when they're done well. I think I'm going to keep that A example tucked in my mind. <laughs> it really was nice. But even as we're getting toward the end here, would you mind describing the ranking just one more time? 
Oh, okay. Give an A to the best one, give a B to the second best, and give a C to the, the least, um, to the worst one. Okay. So like your first example, is it an A, B, or a C? Your second example, is it the A, B, or C? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I knew that would be kind of confusing. So uh, always the first one that we watch is the first one that's listed on the ranking sheet. Yes, yes. Okay. So just arrange your alphabet according to the good, better, and best that we see. I know okay. I didn't want, I know it's called good, better, and best, but those terms by themselves don't make sense. Right. <laughs> if I said better and I already said best, that, how does that work? Definitely true. Okay, let's launch it and hopefully that explanation helped out a bit. Yeah, okay, go. and I kind of suspected that would be confusing. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, it's, wait, wait. No, no, that's, that was our, our good examples. I haven't done the test yet. Oh, just kidding. Don't, <laughs> don't rank anything yet. <laughs> no, that, that was ABC. Got <laughs> the, it, got it. Okay, here we go. Examples are ABC and now the test is random. Okay, so I got to get this thing off of my screen. Okay, here we go with the first test example. And our second test example. And our third example. Okay, now it's time to submit your poll ranking. Oops, I'm sorry, I showed you the answers. <laughs> I didn't catch it. Maybe nobody did. Oh, good. Don't they get to see mine while this is up? Um, when the poll's up, we can't see your screen, actually. Oh, oh I, okay. I wasn't sure because I see them both. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have about the usual amount here. So here we go. Okay, CBA. I don't even remember them. I know it was C first. <laughs> okay, and CBA, correct. <laughs> let me get rid of this. And let me show why I did CBA. This was an easy C. <laughs> Opening is not aimed above high bar. Full extension is not achieved. Almost no hip rise and no rotation. Bent arm catch, shoulders at high bar level. Vertical hang, no extension backward. Opening is not aimed above high bar. Some hip rise, but turnover is not in a compressed position. Shoulders at high bar level, but too close to the bar, bent arms. Vertical drop of hips below high bar, and no extension backward. Feet are aimed above high bar, but opening incomplete with flexed feet. Good hip rise and turnover. Shoulders above bar with straight arms on catch. Good extension backward. And maybe not so good of extension backward, but at least there was some extension backward. So it wasn't a great example, but out of the three, it was the best. And what I liked was the straight arms. Those bent arms are just a killer. Okay. Um, I'd like to get into our, our sixth, our final release of low bar to high bar, and that is a backward circle to handstand with flight to high bar. And again, the entry can come from soul circle, clear hip, stalter, or a clear in bar circle, which is not listed as an element in our code. So here are the entries, the toe on entry, the clear hip entry, and do we all know what this is called? It's called a Shapashnikova when it's done from a clear hip. And this is a Stalter entry.
and the clear pike circle or in-bar entry. We are going to use the toe-on entry, which is called the Maloney. It is by far the most common of, the, of this low to high bar release. And let's look at the technique. Late toe on. Dynamic opening of shoulder and hip angles. Release with wrist shift. Weight never settles on top of the low bar. Visual of high bar is already established. Reach for grasp. Hip rise near height of high bar. Pike just enough to clear low bar with the feet. Drive back swing to horizontal. Okay, and our up to two for amplitude. We're looking for the hips near high bar height. And, uh, and the whole body stretched and extended at that high bar height. Um, I just wanted to put a little note in here about the size of the gymnast relative to the distance between the bars. Releases between the bars, high to low or low to high, um, are much harder for the little gymnast if she does not adjust the bars as we do in J.O. So she's got a lot more distance to travel. For instance, if she's in a handstand on the low bar, the distance between her hips and the high bar is a lot greater than those of the taller gymnast and uh, the flight path is a lot easier. And you're going to see examples that are of a couple small gymnasts in here that really have to struggle for that. The other thing that we're looking for is that body shape fully stretched as they're in flight to the high bar. And followed by uh, amplitude of the back swing must drive to horizontal or in the back. Okay, also look for your general execution deductions. Let's look at our first example of an A-ranked Maloney. Outstanding example. Excellent amplitude and body position. Good backswing. And our B example. Decent amplitude of flight, legs apart, very loose body shape, bent legs. And our C example. See, it's a little girl. <laughs> Extreme execution errors, arms, legs, feet, insufficient amplitude of flight, extreme body shape errors throughout. Okay, with that in mind, we're going to take our test on the Maloney. Here is test example number one. Test example number two. And our third test example. Time to submit your poll. Okay, the result, CBA. And that's what I said as well for these reasons. The poor little kid. Extension too early on wrong side of bar. Insufficient amplitude and direction of flight to reach high bar without compromising body shape, tucked knees.
slightly bent arms in candlestick position, somewhat insufficient amplitude of flight, bent arms and lack of amplitude of backswing. Tight body position, fairly good amplitude of flight, good amplitude of backswing. Okay, and I leave you with this words of wisdom, good, better, best, never let it rest, till good is better and better is best. Uh, Lindsay, are there any questions? There are no questions right now, but certainly if anyone has them, they could still type those in. Okay, I have a, a little entertainment for you. I know I'm right at my maximum, but I'm going to yep. start it anyway. This is a collection of all the single bar high releases from 2011 from the FIG code. And uh, it's, it's even got music. That was really fun, Judy. Thank you. Video play.
Um, that 